Welcome to the Transparent FX Academy. I'm Nick and I'm a top author on training you with over 190k reputation points. In this video, I will be sharing a very interesting pivot point trading strategy. The way in which I will be performing this complete tutorial is first explaining what pivot points are, then explaining how the market reacts to them, and then how to use them in a trading strategy. And as the last point, I will be explaining step by step how to build a pivot point trading strategy. So it will be a very interesting video filled with value. So make sure you watch it till the end. And without further ado, let's get straight into it. Okay, so starting by following the order, the first thing that we need to speak about is what are pivot points. Now, pivot points are simply some mathematical calculations, which since a lot of traders are paying attention to them, will act as support or resistance areas. Now, the first one, the first level is the classical pivot point, which is a underlined by P, this will be P. And this is calculated by taking the previous high plus the previous low plus the previous close and dividing it by three. So this is essentially how we get P. Then we will, ha then we will have the first support area, which is S1, which is P times two minus the previous high. Then we have S2, which is P minus previous high minus previous low. Then we have the, the resistance areas, which are R1 and R2, which are P times two minus previous low and P plus previous high minus previous low. When I when we were speaking about S1 and S2, these are essentially support one and support two. R, R1 and R2 are resistance one and resistance two. Now, obviously you will never have to do these calculations by hand. I just shared them because this is one of the most common ways of calculating the pivot points. It's not the only way, there are other ways as well, but it's one of the most common ways. And essentially here in TradingView, we have a software which automatically does it, right? We simply have to click in order to have indicators, an indicator on your chart which calculates the pivot points for you. All you have to do is click here on indicators, then you search for pivot point. And what you will have is pivot point standard. You click here and you will see that automatically the pivot points are calculated for you. You will have P as one, then you will have S2, S3, because simply here, since it's automatically calculated, you can have as many as you want. And then you have R1, R2, and then you have also R3, R4, R5, they're all calculated for you. Now, what is important to note is that me personally, I like to have them in black, and I don't like to have more than S1 and S2 and R1 and R2. So what I will do here is put them in black, and then I will simply remove the other ones. So I don't want to see all the other ones. Okay. Now, the second thing is how the market reacts to these zones. Now, when it comes to the market reaction to the areas, you will obviously see the market react to these zones as support or resistance, depending on whether or not you have a resistance area, which will be R1 or R2, or a support area, which essentially will be either S1 or S2. Now, in a situation like this, it's pretty clear which areas are support or resistance. The only one that it remains to be defined is P. Now, the pivot point can act as support or resistance depending on whether the market is approaching it from above or below. For example, here, by the time that I'm recording this video, it's very clear that the market was here above P, which is the pivot point. The market went all the way down and tested the pivot point. And since we were approaching it from above, it, it has been acting as support and the market is rejecting it to the upside. If this situation was inverted in which the market was approaching it from below, we would, have, we would have had a higher probability of the market testing the zone and then respecting the pivot point as resistance. Because if you're approaching it from above, you expect it to act as support. If you're approaching it from below, you expect it to act as resistance. Now, this brings us to how to use these pivot points and resistance and support areas in a trading strategy. Now, what we have to do is identify some patterns on how the market reacts to these zones and how they move in these zones, right? That is exactly what we need. Now, what you will notice here is that 
when the market tests either S1 or P or R1, those are the levels that the market respects the most. Now, often you will see the market go also to a S2 and R2, but to keep things sim simple, at least for this a tutorial, let's go ahead and remove them, even though you can also a look to incorporate a strategy also with them. But just to keep things simple, let's just speak about a strategy which only uses the pivot point and then the support one and resistance one, okay? Now, in a situation like this, it's pretty clear that a way in which you can use pivot points to develop a strategy is looking too long at the pivot point and taking profit at the resistance. For example, if the market here is approaching from above, you could be looking for a strategy which if the market tests the pivot point, you're looking too long with a big risk reward all the way up to the resistance one, right? You would be able to have more or less an intraday one to six risk reward all the way up to the um, to the resistance. However, what you will see is that very often you will have the possibility to be look, looking for multiple moves. However, a pattern that by studying the market in the past I have noticed very, very often is that you don't really want to be looking at multiple setups rejecting the same levels. What do I mean? Look exactly here what the market did. Everything was happening in a very textbook way. We had the market above the zone, it went all, all the way down, tested the pivot point from here, rejected to the, to the upside perfectly, tested the resistance, R1 essentially, and then rejected to the downside. So at this point, you had essentially already completed a two-way move. That is how I call it. You had already a move to the upside to one of the resistances or supports and already rejected it to the downside. Now, what you will notice is that after the market already created that two-way move, it will stop respecting in a very precise way the pivot point. So you will start to see the market just zigzagging on a pivot point without really respecting it anymore. That is most likely because all traders that are looking to trade pivot points has, have already executed that day their positions, so they're not really looking to trade off of them that much, and at that point they simply stop having the effect that they have. So the first rule, for example, if I was to, de to develop a pivot point trading strategy, would be to only look at maximum two trades in a day on a specific pair when they haven't yet tested and respected the pivot points. For example, let's see what was happening here. The day started, our software here calculated already our pivot points, the market created a move to the downside here, tested, support one, from here, this is where we want to see a rejection to the upside. And we had the possibility to go for a massive risk reward all the way up to the pivot point. Here, take profit hit, however, the market broke above the pivot point. At that point, after you have a break above the pivot point, what you know? You know that, as we defined previously, when you have P, this one will always act as resistance. This one will always act as support. P depends. If it, the market is approaching it from above, it will be acting as support. If the market is approaching it from below, it will be acting as resistance. Once you had the break above, at this point, you could be looking for the second trade of the day because the market hasn't yet tested resistance one, which you want to see the market go and test. So at this point, what you would expect is for the market to go and test that pivot point and reject to the upside and go and complete at R1. So as you can see, he had this second setup. At this point, all pivot points have been tested. We had already a two-way move all the way down to the S1, then break of P and to R1. At this point, you will be not you, you won't be looking anymore for trades because you have a good probability that the market will just stop respecting pivot points and go sideways, right? Here, this day, we didn't have the market respect anything because it didn't test any of the pivot points this specific day. But if, for example, here, the market would have tested the pivot point if we were trading by the set of rules that we have just started identifying here, as an example, we would be looking too long of the pivot point, right? What we can see here, for example, is that, again, we didn't really have any of the pivot points that were tested or rejected. In a situation like this, that is exactly what the market did. We had essentially the day started exactly at the pivot point and we had to move to the downside. Correction, tested here, the pivot point started rejecting, another test here, and then we went all the way down to support one. So in a situation like this, what we could be looking to do is short here, and our take profit essentially would be the support one, okay? So as you can see, these are the ways in which you could be 
potentially using pivot points in order to uh, develop a trading strategy, a pivot point trading strategy. Now, moving on, how to build a complete pivot point trading strategy, because these are just concepts that I'm sharing here, but it's not enough. It's not really a complete strategy. So how you build step by step a pivot point trading strategy. The way in which you do that is exactly by following these three steps. The first one is backtest. The most important aspect when it comes to backtesting is defining the set of rules for the strategy. So where you will be looking for your entry, when you will be looking for your entry, what kind of risk to reward will you be looking to take? Now, risk to reward is an extremely important concept when it comes to the strategy, because my suggestion is, for example, to always have at least a one to three risk to reward. What does it mean? It means that you will be making at least three times as much if the trade hits your take profit with respect to what you will lose if your trade actually hits your stop loss. So for example, if you have a one to three risk to reward, your risk to reward tool will look at something, look like something like this, right? In which you have risk to reward ratio of three. And if you're, for example, you're taking 10 trades, okay? You lose seven trades and let's say, for example, you're risking 1% per trade. That is part of your trading plan. If you lose seven trades with 1% risk per trade, you will have minus 7%, right? However, if you win three trades, so this means that over 10 trades, you lost seven, one, three, that is a 30% win rate. So extremely low, still you would be in profit because those three trades, if you're making three times as much, which is 3% per trade with respect to the 1% that you're losing when you lose, that will give you a plus 9%, right? So total plus nine minus seven will give you plus 2% profit, okay? That is why I always suggest to have at least a one to three risk to reward in your trading plan and rules of the strategies, because that will give you the possibility, even if you have only a 30% win rate, to still be trading in a profitable way with that strategy. So backtest, define your rules of this strategy. You can obviously fine tune them when while you're backtesting. You can create a backtesting spreadsheet and you simply go back and say, okay, what happened here? What happened here? And you calculate it, what kind of rules you want to incorporate in your strategy. Once you have done with that, you can start demo trading that strategy to see if you can replicate what you were getting in your backtesting results actually in a live market situation, even if it is demo. Once you have already been consistent with demo trading with many months, for many months, at that point, you can start thinking about implementing that strategy on a live account. But I always suggest to be following these steps. Otherwise, what could easily happen is that you get caught in the cycle of doom in which you essentially keep, keep shifting from strategy to strategy. And the reason for which you would you would do that is simply because every time, even though you have found a strategy that if you had already back tested it and mastered it and you knew its statistical data, you essentially would continue to trade it even during a losing streak while most traders haven't properly tested a strategy. So what they will do is as soon as they lose a couple of trades, they will simply skip to the next strategy and they will keep doing this over and over and over again. Even though the first strategy, for example, if they would have simply continued to trade the first strategy, understanding that sometimes every strategy will have some losing streaks, then that strategy would have simply continued to perform. So this is a very, very important thing to always follow these three steps. If you enjoyed the video, make sure that you smash that like button and comment below. It really does support the creation of more free education and analysis for all of you. And I will see you in my next video.